Strain Hunters 2011, on the way to the Caribbean. Oy. In 2011, uh, we decided to do two expeditions in two countries, one Trinidad and one St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The main reason we wanted to do these um, two expeditions in one movie is to show the whole world the different policies related to drug law in two countries and how it's going to affect those two countries in the future. I try my best to taste as many different strains as possible. I, I do consider myself a strain hunter connoisseur. So, and I've traveled, uh, most of my travels are for smoking. So I've been to, you know, St. Vincent, Jamaica, uh, California, Amsterdam, of course, you know. So most of my visits, Switzerland and these places, are specifically for smoking or for finding the strains and seeing what they have out there. Wicked wings with yeah. wicked that, that, sauces. That, 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 How many sauces you have? We have 49 flavors. As Which uh, one is this? Yeah, flavors? This one is mango, I believe. So we have some mango, some honey mustard. I had strawberry here. Actually. Incredible. So how are they, Frank? How they are. Because they say the world's best chicken flavor. They are. It's incredible. Doing so, I've been going to Amsterdam since 2005. And uh, I met Franco first, and we started talking. He asked me where I was from, and you know we shared a joint and had some good words. And of course, Aryan came up with the brilliant idea to do a Strain Hunters episode down here. So, and here we are, you know. Unfortunately, when we went, landed in Trinidad just after our scouting trip already a while ago, they enforced the state of emergency. That means there's a cur curfew from 11 to 5 in the morning. And already the tension that you felt in the island was intense. It's alleged that a container of firearms came in onto our port and went missing. Now, they announced the state of emergency, stating that um, they are holding it to find and get rid of the firearms. It's strictly for firearms in the country. So, they've arrested a lot of people and they found a lot, a lot of cannabis. Huge seizures of cannabis, but they've only found something like 50 guns. And Trinidad is a, a, a small island with huge, huge amounts of firearms. They don't seem to be going really after these things. 
you think that these severe laws make it worse, the whole prohibition? You see more problems because of cocaine and arms and no-go areas? Because well, I remember last time we passed an area, even you could not go in there yeah. because it's a no-go wow. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Trinidad, you know, you yeah. have a no-go area, such a small island, right. how is it possible? You know? Yeah, no, there are areas that, that you know, they are very dangerous areas. The arms um, trade in this country has grown large, very, very large, out of proportion. And the sad thing is the, the government and the, the police officers or the police community always seem to associate the firearms trade with the cannabis trade. Whereas it's not true at all. Trinidad. You're alcoholic. Trinidad. Right? Para Trinidad. No. Coach and the chicken. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs>Every single time someone would, would spark up a joint. They shouldn't uh, rule tobacco joints even in Trinidad because when the police sees you with those things, you know, they'll stop you and give you a pat down immediately, thinking it's marijuana. Trinidad, first of all, we do not mix tobacco with our herb. Yeah. Right, that's the first thing. And usually, a lot of people, when they smoke a joint, they like to smoke a cigarette afterwards. So some ingenious Trinidadian came up with the idea that maybe before the joint is finished, we should open back the joint and stick a cigarette in it. And that's where Trinidad first came up with the roll-on, because you're rolling the joint onto the cigarette. How right? long are they doing, how long are they doing oh, this? Oh, for uh, as long as anyone that I've spoken to can remember. Uh, a lot of us like to break a little tip off the cigarette, it gives it a little more uh, intensity and taste. And then you basically add the cigarette to the end of the joint just the same way you would add a rooch, you know, or a filter. Right? You would, um, you would put it in and basically you tuck around the cigarette. Easy to try with a pencil at first. Once it's tight enough on the cigarette without creasing the cigarette, because if you crease the cigarette you'll get some smoke passing, just lick and stick. And there you have it, you've got yourself. A Trinidad roll-on. This part, the whole thing is called the roll-on. When the pure herb is finished and it gets to the cigarette, the cigarette tastes like the herb. So we call the cigarette part a funk because it tastes funky. some very very good sources in Trinidad to scout some marijuana we knew it was not too great there and also we knew that the planters were having problems and all moving to really really small fields the biggest field you might come across may be less than a quarter of an acre you know and um, some guys even have two trees three trees in one hole they plant different places but they just have one or two here and there uh, it makes it easier if the helicopter passes over and they see two trees in a spot, they're not going to waste their time to land and take down those two trees. So it's smart, but it's also a lot more hard work. Well, They basically use the unique terrain, the mountainous volcanic terrain, to their advantage. You have to walk really, really, really far. You feel like you're dying. You slip, you squelch, you fall down. Um, the mud itself grabs your feet as you walk. And then this all basically helps the growers. During our scouting mission, we had the chance to see plants growing in the vegetative growth stage mostly. And we imagined that 
they would have been a little bit bigger, the flowers, during the end of the flowering period. How many plants you have here in this patch? Like yeah. four or five hundred? Yeah, more than five hundred. And you plant like every time a little bit, so every time you can harvest a little bit. When is yeah. the harvest time here? Harvest time is be more like this month. September month is more harvest until, time. Until September, November. October, yeah. We find some decent stuff. And, uh, but the main problem of the state of emergency, also there you saw, is that the planters were really, really hiding their plants between like one and two square meter little fields, also half an acre we saw, but um, pretty low grade quality compared to St. Vincent and Jamaica. Too much water. Too much, yeah, water. Too much water. Hey, and, and, the, and the, fresh, the fresh land here that you use, eh? This is natural soil. How, how many years can you use it? Good. Well, you can use this for about three, four seasons straight on, but after you have to rest the land. And then you have to rest it? To for rest two land. years? At least two At to three years. Two to three years, and then you can use it again. And the growers harvest it very, very early. That is because the situation of repression on the island is so bad that they are forced to hide and to cut as quickly as possible. So they don't even actually allow their plants to mature properly, to finish their cycle properly because they live in this panic situation, they just want to make sure they get their crop in, they get some money in, and they stay out of jail. Man, this is crazy. The, the spicy sativa fresh, it's really... But it's dense here, it's genius. We need it's seeds good. from this later. Yeah, right. We yeah. need the seeds from this plant, man. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, normally now the people now doesn't want to buy the weed with the seeds. No, 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 of course they not. They want it easy. High grade. We don't want to smoke seeds, man. <laughs>
spirituality, there is cannabis over the mountain top. As soon as you cross over the mountain top, you will find little fields, of course, because we're in Trinidad, right? Small plots. But there are, there is herb. You might find even better things than we saw so far in this trip. But we wouldn't venture on this trip into that area, of course, because then you know there may be no more greenhouse seeds and the hole. So you know we'd stay away from from trouble. We also had a chance to visit a, a very special location on the island of Trinidad and that was a really underground small operation right on the outskirts of the city, of the main capital. So in a very, very dangerous situation considering the curfew and the state of emergency. So guys, we're here in a country state of emergency, Trinidad. Uh, a lot of indoor grow rooms are closed down now. A lot of big plants are moved away. Man, so the guys moved completely back into the bush. So hiding. helicopters cannot see it. Hiding, eh? Yeah. Real yeah. hiding. How, 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 how big of a problem is it? Major problem. Major problem? Yeah, major problem. How long has this been Lights, going on? Even the papers, the newspapers, yeah. the price of marijuana, they doubled. So yeah. you see it of emergency, no? Double the price of marijuana yeah. on the island. Double. These friends, they had a, a small grow around a veggie field where they used to grow tomatoes and other crops and they hide their plants, literally camouflaging them in the bush. And they do it by small patches, one, two, three, four, five plants together, not more. And they absolutely camouflage those plants so that you, if you're standing at three, four, five meters from them, you won't see them. It's art what they're doing. Fantastic, but you're doing a really great job, Respect, especially in this, in this circumstance, it's so difficult to man, grow it's now. it's so dangerous. Yeah. The last day we were in, the, in Trinidad, on the island, we had a chance to join a special ceremony, the Sabbath of the Bobo Shanti Rastafari community on the island. Tomorrow we do the, the ceremony, no? Yes, yes, tomorrow. Very, very special people. This is a community within the church that believes in God and our Rastafaris. Thanks to the Most High for divine guidance and protection. Give thanks to the blessed uprising of the Most High. Give thanks to all brethren that come visit I and I from near and far. You know, the one who was living us in I and I, King Emmanuel the Seven, Adonia, Rastafari. The Bobo Shanties are the second largest Rastafarian sect on earth, and they are very. Uh, colorful, they pray a lot, they read the Bible, the Ancient Testament mostly, and it was very special to be allowed to film and to document such an incredible cultural feature of the island. Say that the herb come from King Solomon and that is the lineage of Christ, mm. you know. So we know, say, even just as the Christ, we so smoke herb. When I tell people that, they must feel like if it's some joke, but Christ was the greatest physician, mm. and Christ tell you about the herb and teach people about the herbs. So we know that. So within I and I culture, we know, say that 
The herb originates from Ethiopia, Africa, mm. because there everything comes from. We don't smoke herb for head. We don't smoke herb to get high, to hallucinate, or to enjoy a party. We don't smoke herb for that. We smoke herb for meditation because life is a meditation. It increases the natural you know, energy vibe in the body. Yeah, life on itself is a meditation. From you wake forward. up on your bed in the morning, your meditation running. Till you go to bed at night, you know them really? Even when you're sleeping, your meditation still running because the mind don't sleep. The government is, is openly against cannabis and against even the Rastafari people who use cannabis. But these guys, they live in a way that respects the local community and they show that they can do it. They can use the herb without being harassed or hassled more than a little bit. And this is because they are so strong and so religious and so deep in their thoughts. They don't really deal with the herb, they don't really make a business out of it, but they just grow it for their own use and smoke it for their own prayers and ceremonies. So it's probably the single most accepted way on Trinidad for herb to be approached, even though it's still illegal in that way. Yeah, Franklin. Wow, man, yes, nice little touch. Yes, wow. Nice little touch. Wow. What do you have here, yes. Erwin? They call this Arizona. Arizona. Right. Arizona. You call this Arizona skunk? Arizona skunk. Really, the skunk. It really smells like one. Yeah. See, like you smell this here? one? These plants here maybe have about uh, smell it. three more weeks lifespan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's Maybe pungent. Puke, huh? puke punch. Baby puke, man, beautiful. Baby three, mo three more weeks Chemical. lifespan for the, the, the fatter ones. Really strong. You I call it the fatter one? The fatter mm. ones like smell this, yes, sir? Mm. But That's three more weeks lifespan. Like like yeah. Them they will go more, you know? So half October. Yeah. So half you October. cut you cut most of it half October to half November? Natural. Yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. And how many times a year you plant? Right, wrong, yeah, non-stop. 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 What's this we have here? This is the next grade of skunk here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is mostly skunk we plant here, you know. This is the next grade of skunk, but this one here is the, we call it jam jam. Jam jam. jam yeah. Jamaica. Come from Jamaica? Jam yeah. jam. Okay, Jamaica, that's why it's called Jamaica. jam jam. Yeah, this comes from Jamaica too. The smell? From smell here, the, piney. Piney it smell. It looks like a haze, man. Spicy yeah. watermelon sort of thing for me. Beautiful. Chemical watermelon. Chemical watermelon. You know, the like candies. the chewing gum yeah, from the, chewing the, 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 gum new, the new pack Chem melon. Melon. Chem melon. Chem melon. Chem melon. Yeah. That's, by the way, a good name That's for a, a new plant. Name. Chem, Chem melon. melon. Yeah. And seven helicopters are flying around, I heard, yeah. eh? Only for yeah. ganja. Only for ganja. What That's about the only. cocaine? Nobody goes after the cocaine? Nobody goes after the cocaine because the cocaine... You hear them talking about the big fish, them? Yes. I them control that. The big fish, them control yeah, the, the big fish. business. Yeah. With the politicians together? You understand? Well, the big fish, them link with the politicians because the politician, politicians is big fish too. What really worries me, you know, if the lack of herb is going to go on like this, on an island like this, in the future, the young people are going to take cocaine because there's nothing else. Not yet. And this is where the yeah. danger starts. In the Seychelles, a country where I came many, many times, like in the late 90s, they start cracking down on all the planters. There's no planter anymore. Everybody was smoking ganja. Now everybody's taking cocaine and freaking out on crack. Huh. Yeah? And the same was going to happen in the Caribbean in countries if they, if they completely get rid of the marijuana and then all the cocaine comes yeah. through and everybody starts taking cocaine and no more smoking more ganja. This is really, really, really stupid. Huh? What, was really, what really touched me about the ceremony was the way we were welcomed and, and the f warm vibe and the energy that people gave us. Um, we were really not treated like outsiders and it was just a, a very special connection that we made with, with the brothers. Um, yeah, I was uh, quite emotional about the whole thing, it was special.
When we arrived in St. Vincent, we immediately realized that the vibe of the island was completely different than Trinidad. Chris, Chris. Long time no see. The entire island relies on cannabis as their one of their main exports, one of the main cash crops. And as a consequence, even though cannabis is still illegal, the entire attitude is completely different. Well, how's the weather today? Dry? Dry. Okay. And how many guys do we have to walk up? Like six or seven now we have now? Seven Ten bags. It's, yeah. it's good, no? Yeah. 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 Look here, classic. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> St. Vincent is amazing nature. The volcano is a high mountain. The top part has not much vegetation, but the rest of the island is covered in thick jungle, really thick jungle, lush and green. It rains a lot, uh, there's a main rain season, a secondary rain season, and there's pretty much wet showers all year round. There's hurricane seasons as well, and the landscapes are amazing, they're breathtaking. The light is so intense, it shines so bright. If you're not used to it, you really need sunglasses, otherwise you can't see. Day one, uh, we walked up to the volcano and remarkable, remarkable what we saw there. Hundreds of fields on the way onto the top, beautiful genetics, a lot of local bushweed in all kinds of stages because people plant the whole year around. What kind of weed is this? The name here is now Jamaican skunks. Jamaican skunks. Yeah, mixed up. And this whole volcano is full of little patches everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's the soil here? It's really vital, huh? Strong soil. Yeah, Man, yeah? Lava yeah, soil, amazing. Well, what is this here, eh? Fall, this is the fall shit. You down. guys feed anything to the plants? Chicken shit. Yeah, yeah. and the arbatas. Well, you guys have enough chickens in the Caribbean, so that will work. <laughs> yeah. And also here again, when we talk to the farmers, you see that the local high grade they have vanishes after two, three, four generations because the local weed is always stronger and takes over because it's so dominant with so much pollen and such a big area that the uh, high grade that is being imported Mostly through Jamaica has no chance. Wow, what we have here. Beautiful, beautiful. This patch, city. what a beautiful patch, guys, look. It's incredible, man, this valley, look how nice the sun comes in. And all the way until the other valley, you see only, only ganja. It's like ganja country here. Full carrot. Full. This is so carroty. Look different than the other patch you were, eh? Uh, no, all the seeds are the same. The same, just yeah, mixed same. up genetics. Yeah. But it was very interesting to speak to all the um, farmers about the land races. We saw different uh, phenotypes of the local bush uh, weed. We saw different ways of how they plant. They have these beautiful, nice little hills because they have this huge amount of rain. Some planters plant like really, really steep. Some planters have a better field. Uh, well, it was also nice to hear that they only plant one year on one field or two years maximum some because they give some fertilizer that they can get at the local grocery shop. And then they would leave the field for two, three years and swap to the field next door and start growing there again. We are 13 hours on the road, guys. 13 hours we've been Beautiful field. hunting for this uh, stuff. Very, very good planters, very good farmers, guys. Taking care of the job, taking care. Yeah, but it's a good country. It's well controlled by the politicians. It's well controlled by the police. They have got good drugs law and they have good planters, and all of all comes together that they have a good tourism and a good economy. Yeah. The only thing they should do, the Minister of Tourism, they should do like in Thailand, on the coast where the beaches are in the little villages, build like these little shacks and restaurants like they have in Thailand and India and Goa and Samui, you know, where the local people, where like the, the young tourists that come when they have not so much money, yeah. later they come back when they have money, you attract a young tourist, they can smoke a little bit, they can enjoy the beach, because now it's a lot of tourism that goes to Backway and Mystique. But this main island, look how beautiful. Mm. And it really is the Ganja Island. Yeah. We 
we had to walk a, a good walk to reach the top. It took us a good four hours, five hours, and it was really, really intense. Mostly because of the climate. We had very hot temperature, very sticky, humid air, and it, had, it was really uh, not as easy as some people would have, would have thought. We reached the top and it was really nice because it was one of the few times that the clouds were not completely surrounding the top of the mountain. So we had really good views of the crater and we had the chance to rest a little bit, eat something all the way on top, get back some energies for the descent. I think it's one of the best destinations in the world to come and smoke. Yeah. Government is not too difficult. When they catch you, you're pretty easy. You bail yourself way out. You know, you have more. You're much more relaxed. And look what a nature here, man. Where can you sit like this in a crater? Look. That's yeah, amazing. And there's Ganja Island. I think. Ganja. And just Ganja around. Mountain, Ganja Mountain, man. Ganja Mountain. Ganja Mountain. And just yeah. around all those hills, we're going to go down. We're going to have a look at two, three more fields. It's everywhere it's 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 ganja and you know volcano volcanic ash man it's the best soil it's really. probably the best it's soil the best in the world also in hawaii they have one of those things now where great All marijuana the volcanic grows. islands grow great pot. Big fat ass villa in Bekwe or Misty with your best friend. <laughs> you organize a big, big power boat. Yeah. You blast to the other islands. You walk up to the volcano, so you do good training for you and your friends. You have a nice lunch somewhere in the bush. You smoke a big fat joint. You have the best day of your life. You come back in the night in your villa. You chill. You smoke another one. You go to sleep and you do the next day the same. We call it Pura Vida. Pura Vida. <laughs> no discussion. Let's not forget that the, these islands are included in the list of the top luxury destinations on the planet today. And there must be a reason for that. The reason is not only the beautiful, pristine waters and the friendly music and beautiful people of the islands, but it's also the approach to cannabis. Here you are allowed to smoke and to enjoy cannabis reasonably. Of course, you have to watch out what you do because technically it's still illegal, but you are almost encouraged to enjoy cannabis as part of your holiday, as part of the local culture of the island. We stayed in a really nice villa, which was quite unusual. And for Australian hunters, we were like staying in the absolute uh, lap of luxury. But that didn't change the fact about the work that we had to do um, every day. We decided uh, after renting our villa and uh, scouting around to hide out on uh, Bekwe and Mystique. And uh, in that case, we also needed the power boats, the original power boats for the smugglers, because there's no other way to go quickly unseen into St. Vincent. Using the boat was a lot of fun, but at the same time required a lot of logistics around it. Of course you attract a lot of uh, viewers when you come with cameras and a lot of white people on a black beach. 
So uh, we decided to do this really, really rapidly. Uh, we've asked the locals to see where can we land quickly, all on a powerboat. We are there in 30, 40 minutes from, the, uh, from our island to the main island. We jump off or on the boat. We go straight into the jungle to the fields. Nobody sees us, so we are very, very safe and we are very fast. It saves a lot of time. It's cheaper in the end and it's much more fun. One of the things uh, we were looking for is, of course, in each country the best land races and the best fields. Wow. Look at these guys. Good job. Dry room. <coughs> <laughs> That's a little bit different than we do it, eh? Yeah. Look here, there's nice shunt with all the wood and the cloth. And the heater here close to it, so it yeah. dries a little extra. Yeah. Uh, gets a bit smoky flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke weed, eh? <laughs> How do you dry anything? Uh, which smells really nice, eh? Yeah, it yeah. smells really sativa high, yeah, crisp. Very nice. Crystal clear high. Yeah. It smells a little bit away in snow direction, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? yeah. Sure. It's in that direction, I tell you. Yeah. Man, we had a lot of work eh, to clip this. You see the guys are all clipping with scissors here, eh? I know. They're doing it the American way. Great smell, guys. Really, really great smell. This I want to smoke. I'm going to keep this one for myself. scouting mission here on St. Vincent, we met uh, Blaka, who had a beautiful field. He had the local bushweed, he had the high grades uh, from Europe and America, and he had some hybrids crossed from Jamaica with other stuff, with local stuff, with American stuff. Unfortunately, when we arrived here on the first day, uh, we find him completely devastated. Oh, man, it's really, really bad, eh? The family has no food anymore. Uh, the police from St. Vincent located his field by coincidence. They have chopped down everything, like a week before harvesting, two weeks before harvesting. Hey, Blaka. Yeah, man. What happened, man? Well, the evil one. The evil one came. Yeah, the evil one came and destroyed everything. Some of his workers got arrested during the bust and later on released. We had a chance to meet Blaka and talk to him in the field that was cut down by the cops just two weeks earlier. Straight yeah. back to zero. It's crazy. Yeah, they destroy everything. Yeah. Until it's in your hands, it's not in your hands. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the best felt, best field, Simon. This was the best field when we were scouting two months ago, you remember, three months ago? Yeah, man. This was such this a beautiful... This was big mm -hmm. plan. So. This thing remind us that prohibition still goes on, even in these nice, friendly, tolerant islands, and that the war is never over until it's legal. All those families and so on is suffering right now. They're suffering right now because the yeah, police cut it down. Yeah, yeah. totally. And they, they seem to enjoy doing that. And they not only do, do that, but they take all your facilities, gas bottles and everything, and food and anything that, that, that is suitable for them. They, yeah. they got to survive. Right now, all the uh, bananas and planting, agriculture in the whole, is total devastation as well. The, a disease on all the bananas and planting. There's and a I disease? Know. Totally. On the bananas? bananas? I'm talking about devastation. He, in this yeah. island? Right now. And all the traffickers, uh, 
no refusing these plants. Yeah, and yeah it's not allowed because mm -hmm. if you import uh, bananas with a disease, other countries are going to make problem. And so this is big, big economic crisis also then. Yeah, for definitely. The people, so eh? the, the people are so, hungry. Yeah? So people are hungry on the island, and like the, the little money that is coming in mo mostly is for, from the herb. Yeah. Of yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is that because the police cut down the plants, mm -hmm. there's going to become more violent and crime in the street. Yeah, not saying I am going to do that. No, but some of them are going yeah, to do this. Because but the majority food, no? is going yeah. to do that because they have family. Okay, if I look at the geography of the island, man, mm -hmm. I mean, they can't stop it. No, no there's no way to cry. stop it no because we're like, you see it. Stop this. You have so many soldiers on this island, you yeah, can't stop it. Yeah, but to tell, you, to tell you that and so on, they know that the plant is for the serve, the seed. Are bearing seeds for the service of man, yeah. and it's God talking there when you're talking about that, not man. So their law cannot compare with the law of the Creator. So there's no way they can stop this from since creation. Sure. This is one of the messages we want to show to the people. You know that everywhere we come, and where they clamp clamp down on on on, on growers, you see more poverty coming. Yeah. Right, totally. You know, and the children don't go to school anymore. The mothers have no food. It's terrible. Massive, a new style, Espanol, Mr. Rico. Don't you want style? Don't you start? Yeah! Well, of course, um, in any expedition of this type, you know, we are dealing with something that's not yet legal. And um, it, it is not the safest thing to be doing at all times. We have to be careful. So there is, of course, the element of stress within the situation, but we have a lot of fun. You know, we have a lot of fun out there. Everyone seems reasonable. Everyone gets to, to, to what they need to do in the end, and we get it done. No, 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 bye, bye. I'm about to die, die, die. Come on, say, come to. Suelta, suelta. Sometimes when we go around, we have to take a break, so. One of the nice, interesting breaks we took was in a little village where a, li a party was going on, a little street party. There was a cafe blasting music and people were smoking, drinking, playing domino, doing all kinds of things. Yeah, 50 grand. For 100 pounds, 50 grand, not yeah. change price. What kind of great? Jamaican stuff or local? Mm. Mix. You grow? Mix. Mix. Yeah. Where is it? More for local or more for export? Mm, both. Both. Yeah. Yeah, in Vinci, it's the best thing to do, no? Grow some ganja. Yeah? Yeah, man. Respect. Full respect. Tell me I'm right now. Anyway, you know, my boy. The best. The best. Anyway. Vinci. Marijuana. Trust me. Liar doctor, Indian and chief. Everybody else them a who smoke that the weed. We, of course, uh, created a lot of attention in the street, so we didn't stay too long. But it was very nice to see this rough part of the island, to have the chance to experience the ghetto-style living and to see how the rough boys here do their thing, how they talk and how they survive. When you buy a joint on the beach of Barbados or San Lucia or Antigua or British Virgin Islands, even Trinidad, there's a very high chance that that joint came from St. Vincent. The network of people that is needed to make sure that all this happens is, is astonishing, is incredible. We'll have a planter with a few guards taking care of the field. Uh, the crop is nearly the whole year around. Then you have the guys with the boats, you have the middlemen, you have the transporter, and with the boats from Zin Vinci, who is the main supplier for the whole Caribbean, it will go anywhere where there will be a demand for cannabis, fortunately. I'm a transporter. You're a transporter. Yes, transporter. Yes, transporter. A night walker. Night worker. Only night shift. Night work. Night shift. Only the night shift. So how does the run work? Not a lot of people want to walk in. It all happens in the night? No, not all the time in the night. Some people leave in the day 
and get into the night when they reach the final destination. It depends how far it is. Depends on how far it is. Yes. Some of these characters we spoke to told us stories that we could not believe. It was really amazing to feel the tension in their voice. Uh, what's the most amazing story that happened to you? You were telling that you were drifting off for 19 days? 19 days. 19 days. 19 and how, days. how did you survive on food and on drinks? What did you do? Well, we catch water in the bow. For five days, no water, no food. Then it rained. Then it rained, so we blocked the hole. Yeah. We catch a lot of water. We put in a bottle. Mm. Well, I'm the captain. Mm. Uh, two other guys. So in the day, one guy will bail the water out, and in the night, one guy bail. But me, I don't bail, I'm the captain. Yeah, but why are they in the water? Because half of the boat is in the water. Okay. Half of the boat is full of water. Oh, you understand? So sometimes I lie on the bow, and the boat pass, and I Because the boat, they land, I catch the bird, and I take sponge, light it and I roast the bird. But when you're eating, you're tasting the sponge. Yeah. But what the fuck? Okay, you know. <laughs> you're hungry. And realize that they really are the last pirates. They really are a link in a chain that makes sure that cannabis is produced, delivered, and consumed, no matter if it's legal or, Ill or illegal. So in which areas is it the most dangerous to land? Which of the islands were like? Very close. The closest one, Barbados. That's the most dangerous one. Most dangerous. Why is the most dangerous? Best coast because coast. they don't want to catch you. They want to they kill you. They kill you. They don't catch you. They, they, they don't give a fuck about catching no? you. They kill you. Strain Hunters is an authentic documentary. Everybody plays who he is. We don't like to have uh, actors or substitutes for people. And uh, during our short days together, you talk and you talk. And at one point, we explain them their situation that we are in. In the end, our movies could make a difference for everybody. And they, they, they realize this. And you build up a slowly re relation, and you ask them to tell also their story, to have a bright picture of what's really, really happening in the cannabis world, in which people like me and other people are forced with their back against the wall to make something happen. Respect, man. Yeah, man. It's a life you have to live, man. No shit. Five kids. The night worker. Night worker. Say honey, say honey, say honey, say honey. We, we, bum, bums, and all of you. I, of course, being a, a person that like cannabis, I love, you know, I deal with a lot of positive energy. I try to keep as positive as possible, believe in a higher power and try to live righteously and truly, you know, in every day to day. And in saying so, you find that um, in every country, in every place, you feel a different vibe, a different atmosphere. St. Vincent, you land in St. Vincent and you feel, you feel light, you feel refreshed. I've had the opportunity to see how people in St. Vincent live and it's a very, very poor island. Some people work for no more than 200 US dollars a month and they have families to, to take care of. Yet still, when they, are, when they are out and people come and they see them, they would take their last dollar to buy something for a friend, right? For even a stranger, right? They are a nicer set of people. They, they are well, well-rounded, good, positive-minded people, you know, and the energy reflects it. chance to swim in an incredible pool at the bottom of a waterfall in the jungle. The water was so fresh, so refreshing after the heat of the day. So I invite anyone to come to St. Vincent and experience the island.
after chasing the best land race or marijuana available on an island, and sometimes because we lost the field of Blaka that was our main priority in the beginning of the mission, we walked all the way up to this uh, volcano to find more and more fields. We saw maybe a hundred fields. And sometimes you work 13, 14 hours a day and you see a lot of the same stuff, but you just don't find the holy grail. So we sent Dr. Green for one more scouting on his own with some contact we had on the island and he came up with an amazing location. All around the side of the mountain, very steep terraces, plants properly spaced, good size and good buds. Where were the first day? Yeah, up there. Okay. All, the way. all the way up there. And then you find a field 50 minutes from the beach. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible, eh? Amazing. It was not very uniform, but this was very good to us because we were looking for variety. We were looking to see a good representation of pretty much what the island has to offer, and we had the chance to get that. This field was definitely the most organized we saw. Even the shanty there had proper shelf and all the material and the equipment was neat and tight and clean. The plants were very, very interesting. We came across a few Jamaican crosses with this incredible celery scent mixed to a little bit of lemon, a little bit of mint in some of them, fresh sativas. There were also a few fruity plants. Uh, one of them, Dr. Green named Tutti Frutti, and I think he, he really hit the spot with that name because it was incredibly complex. Uh, most of the plants we saw were clearly sativas because the dominant land race, the Santa Marta dominant land race on the island, overpowers any variety that comes in from abroad. It takes about three to four years, but it eventually gets, gets completely melts into the local land race. So the planters look for high-grade seeds, demand new high-grade seeds to be able to have some crosses going on, to increase their production, to increase the amount of money they get per pound. Here mm -hmm. the candy shop, the strain hunter's candy shop. Yeah. Ganja, uh, Ganja Mountain. Ganja Mountain. Ganja Volcano. Ganja Volcano. Ganja Volcano. Ganja Volcano. Ganja Volcano. Ganja Volcano. Uh, and there you see again, you have to do a lot of hours of strain hunting to find the absolute best. You have to be in the parties with the locals. You have to go to the bars, drink a beer with the locals. You have to go to that party. You maybe have to organize a little party for yourself and then you slowly, slowly find out who is the guy who's got the best high grade, who is the guy who has known to take care really good of his field and his plants because in the end that makes a good documentary.